For a lot of people, the rotary attachment can seem quite hard to use and very intimidating. When I first started using the rotary attachment, I didn't really understand it perfectly either, and I could never sort of figure out exactly you know, how the rotary attachment worked in relationship to the software, or the logos that I was generating in, in a program like CorelDRAW. Um, and then once I started really taking a look at the rotary attachment, I realized it is really easy to use. It's just a matter of sort of changing your thinking and how you set the job up and how you think about the job. So anytime I sort of started selling a, a, a new system, the first video I always did was, was on the rotary attachment because typically the rotary attachment typically generates the most amount of questions that I'll ever get asked. So I always take a look at doing the rotary attachment video first. I have done some videos on the Trotec laser uh, with the rotary attachment, um, but as I mentioned, I'm going to keep this, this video quite generic so that anybody can take a look at it and understand how the rotary attachment works. The first thing to, to look at when you're actually doing the rotary attachment is how does the job relate to the actual round item itself? And this is really where once you understand this relationship, then it makes it a little easier how to take a look at artwork and how to superimpose that on the actual round item you're working with. I know there's some camera systems out there now and you know some people have said, well, I can use my camera to, to locate this. You can't. Um, I've never seen any software that allows us to take a flat file and curve that right around an actual round item. For example, uh, if you've got some artwork, think of your artwork as you would as a 2D image, which is what artwork really is. It's sitting on a 2D plane. We've got an X and Y plane, we have no Z there, and when you've got artwork, it basically looks like this on this piece of white paper. If you place it on top of the rotary glass, then the artwork needs to be curved. And I've never seen any software do this, so we have to sort of figure out how this artwork gets curved so that we can figure out exactly where we can place the item on our glass. In this video, we'll take a look at how to sort of basically figure this out. And once I get into subsequent videos with the Trotec Rotary, then I'll show you exactly how to pinpoint a location on a round item, whether it's a wine glass or, or a Yeti mug, and hit that location every time. That way you have no wastage and we're not throwing things out and it takes away a lot of the inhibitions that people have when it comes to the rotary attachment. As you can see, I've got lots of round items here to test. Uh, I've got some metal mugs with handles. I've got uh, basically a, some sort of a margarita type glass. I've got a sifter glass. I've got basically a flower type holder. I've got a glass with a logo on it, um, you know, basically a Pilsner glass, um, small uh, craft. And really, the thing to remember here is that all the glass, there are intricacies to each piece of glass that we're etching. And these things need to be taken into account when you're actually looking at etching the glass. There's going to be things like, uh, you know, like this one has a taper on it. So how do I hit that taper effectively? Um, you know, this one has a logo here. Somebody wants engraving on the back side here. How do we line up and get that done properly so that it's lined up perfectly? And again, I'm going to address all these issues that we have with these different types of glasses. Um, I may not do it totally in this um, video, but we'll take a look at it in a subsequent video that I, that I will do on, on some of the individual pieces of glass here. One of the most important things that, that I tell people when it comes to working with the rotary attachment is we have to 
before we actually accept the order, we have to make sure we know where the logo is going to go on the glass or, or, the, or the, the, the text or whatever the customer wants um, on, that, uh, on that item that you're going to etch for them. For example, you know, if you're looking at a, at a glass like this, um, if we look at this and we put it into, in, into levelness, we sort of have this, this tapered off area here in the glass. Well, this is an area where I really can't put a logo on here. So I really need to keep my logo in this area right here. Um, and I don't want to get too close to the rim because if I get too close to the rim, some people don't like that when they're drinking out of the, the, the wine glass, in this case here, where the lips are touching the etch part of the glass. Okay, um, and if you're not using a wet newspaper or, or, or the transfer tape and where you're going to get a smooth image and you just do a raw glass, you're going to have shards of glass there. And that's really not going to be very comfortable. So again, you, you, in this case here, you, you'd be taking, looking at the customer saying, well, you know, I need to get some sort of a location in here where my logo is going to be. So that's very important for you to establish that with the customer. Okay. Um, you know, we, I remember when I did this glass for myself, again, I looked at this glass and the scene here became my center point of where I was going to put my logo. And, and the reason for that is because this matches up in the middle of this opening here. And so I wanted to keep my logo centered here and then I also wanted to keep my logo centered on the seam at the back here. And that wasn't just for the for the positioning of the logos, but it also made for me when I was actually putting the next one in that I had a good lineup area. So again, it's not just establishing for where the customer wants the logo, but it's also sometimes helping you so that you can decide where you're going to put that glass for a lineup so that when you put the next one in, it's like it's in and we tighten and we're ready to go. It's out, we put the next one in, it's tightened because it's got to be quick because the longer we think about this, the longer we fool around with it, the harder it is for us to make money because we're now decreasing the productivity. You know, if you take a look at a, at a Yeti here, and I'll, and I'll go through a, you know, a, a, a video on doing a Yeti mug here, a lot of times people want the logo in the middle of the E and the T here. And so again, not only are you establishing that with the customer, that that's where they want it, but you can also, in your mind, you're thinking, well, that's a great location for me to, to have for my red dot pointer lineup, okay? So that when I put it in, I line up in between the E and T. I don't have to think about it. It just goes in and, and off I go. Okay, so these are things that need to be thought about when you're actually looking at this. And when we, when I do the individual videos, we'll try to touch on that so that you understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. You know, another thing that has to be uh, accounted for here is sometimes a handle. Okay, you know, how close can I get to the handle without hitting, without the laser head hitting the, the handle? Am I going to clear the bottom as I come all the way around? You know, maybe the customer wants a outboard. And an inboard design, outboard, you know, most people are right-handed, so the outboard is that way, inboard is this way, okay? Um, and, uh, and, and basically you need to establish the, with the customer, you know, where do you want it? Do you want it here? Do you want it there? Okay, if they want two, well, which one's there and which one's there? So again, these are things that you need to, to think about when you're, when you're dealing with the customer. You know, if you look at a, at a, at a vase like this, um, you know, again, the area might be here. Well, can I tilt my, my rotary attachment up enough to get this level? Does this turn properly when I tilt it up? And, and, and so again, you know, these are things that need to be established so that, so that it makes your life a lot easier when you're, when you're doing it. And there's no guesswork because anytime you start guessing with a customer, then they have an out if something is wrong with, with, with the job. Again, you can see that this glass actually has a pour line on here. So I would probably use that for my lineup. And again, we'll probably go through that and, and, and talk about that. One of the other things you have to understand is what's the diameter of the glass, and this is this is critical too because sometimes your your rotary attachment might not hold the diameter. You know, if somebody has a seven or eight inch diameter, a lot of times that might not be able to be held properly. You know, with the system that you have. Uh, so again, you need to look at, at at the way you're going to be able to hold that that glass and make sure that that's set up properly. Um, another one is this coffee uh, cup here that I've got because this sort of explains. You know, when we're looking at diameter. Um, is this glass, you have to be careful because this is three and a half inch diameter at the top and two and a quarter inches at the bottom, okay? And if I put a full logo on here, 
then what's going to happen with this is the logo is actually going to be maybe if I put in a three and a half inch diameter, it might be might be all right here, but as I get down to the bottom, it may start to condense. Okay, so it may not look properly. So again, you might say, well, I need to be more around here and I need sort of more of an average style diameter. And again, you know, we'll do a glass like this and uh, hopefully, you know, you'll get a better idea as to what I'm talking about there. So again, it's always critical that we look at the glass or the item that we're working with um, so that we can get a, a feel for how we're going to hold it, how we're going to do the job. Again, you know, if you're doing this rolling pin, well, do these handles come off? Right? That's critical, right? We don't really want to try to hold it here. It's certainly a lot easier if we hold it here. So again, these are things that we need to look at. Sometimes they sound very simple to people, but you'd be amazed how many people don't think about them and they don't get the ability to get that productivity going and they spend a lot of time um, because they haven't really thought about the, the location, the job before they actually go ahead and do it. When I'm teaching people how to use the rotary attachment on the laser machine, the fundamental rule that we need to understand is where do we actually want to put the artwork on the glass? When we're working in a 2D image on the laser machine, we're looking at, you know, an XY coordinate, which is basically, you know, X being left to right, so or the width, and the Y is the height. Um, and we do the same thing, you know, on a rotary attachment. The X happens to be this way and the Y happens to be the turn. So when you plug in your rotary attachment, typically what you're doing is you're disabling the Y axis and the Y axis becomes the turn of the actual mug itself. The question that you need you need to ask yourself and the thing that we need to understand is, is then if we don't have a page height anymore and we have a turn of the mug how does that turn of the mug relate to the page height um, and on a round item that is the circumference okay so the circumference can be figured out a couple of different ways um, we can just measure the glass all the way around and we can figure out exactly what it is. There's a couple of ways that we can do that. Um, we can also use the, we can figure the diameter out of the mug and then we can just multiply by pi and again that gives us a, a, a page height. So if I have a, you know, if I have a diameter of three inches, um, all I need to do is multiply that by pi, which is 3.14 and that gives me a page height of 9.42 inches. Okay, and when we're taking a look at positioning, it's knowing the circumference and, and how the, the position of that circumference relates to our mug that makes it easy to locate the item on the glass. Now, some machines I worked on, it's a little bit of hit and miss, and it's, it's a totally different process. Um, I can tell you on the Trotec, it's very easy to be able to locate the, the, the logos and what you want to etch on the glass. Um, on, on some other systems, uh, some of the ones I've used in the, worked on in the past, this has been very hard to do. Um, it takes a lot more work and a little bit more guesswork, and it typically means ruining uh, one or two glasses before you get it perfectly right. Um, I don't have to do that on the Trotec system. I can hit it. I can have one glass and, and I, can, I can hit it perfectly. Um, but when we're looking at the rotary attachment, um, that's really what we need to first figure out. Okay? So I could take a set of calipers, and if I was measuring this glass and say I wanted the, the image to be down there, then basically I can just, you know, figure out the diameter. Uh, and then just multiply that by pi, and pi is going to give me the full turn. Okay, so 9.42 inches, if this was 3 inches, would take me all the way around. Okay. There are a couple of other ways I can figure that out. For example, you know, I could take a piece of paper if I wanted, and I could stretch that all the way around here and then find out where that comes and then I could mark this off 
with a pen. Here, and then I could take this off, and then I could measure basically from here to here, and that would give me my circumference. Um, what we've used a lot in the past um, is I just use a, a, a seams uh, ruler, and that typically works pretty good because I can basically place that on the glass, I can go all the way around, and Let's say this is where I want to go, and I'm in around that 9.3 inches area. And you notice that this glass is a little bit tapered, um, and that's very critical because if you have a tapered mug, this is a glass uh, or a, a um, paper uh, coffee cup, but what you notice on this is there's a large uh, discrepancy in the, in, the, in the actual diameter. So a lot of times um, we can't maybe measure up here, we can't measure down here because if I measure down here, it's 2.25. If I measure up the top here, it's basically three and a half inches. Well, if I want my logo here, uh, maybe from here to here, um, I really can't measure the top or the bottom. I could use the caliper, but I could also, if I wanted to, I could just sort of come all the way around here and then go, okay, I'm at nine and a quarter inches. So again, something like this typically works quite easy too. If you want to know what the diameter of 9.25 inches, that's very easy. You just take 9.25 divided by pi, which is 3.14, and that gives us the diameter. So in the case of our rotary, of the Trotec rotary attachment, you do need to put in the, in the, rotor, in the actual diameter, and that's how you figure it out. Sometimes what I'll actually do too is I've actually printed out the actual artwork. And sometimes that's very, what that serves is I can actually then superimpose this on my mug. And because I'm not on this mug, I'm not going all the way around. I'm only working on this area here because maybe, the, maybe this, this handle's gonna hit my laser head. So I can't go all the way around. Uh, and, and on the Trotec, I get a clearance lens, but uh, in this case here, I can get away with this on the rotary attachment. So what I've done is I've actually printed this out, and then I can just wrap this all the way around. And I know exactly uh, in terms of location where I'm going. And again, we'll get into this more often uh, later on when I'm actually do a video and show you actually how to do this coffee mug. Okay. But just remember, there, there are a couple of different ways that you can use to figure out um, the diameter or the circumference that you're working with. Um, and when, when I get into the, into the software, then I can, we can talk about how this relates um, to how we set it up um, in Corel or Illustrator, uh, whichever design program that you're using. Pictured here on the table here is the rotary attachment for the Speedy 300. This system is a cone system. Um, we do also sell a, a roller system where we just have rollers that spin and the item just sits right on top of it. Uh, we also sell a combo system where you actually have a cone and a roller uh, assembly so you can switch back and forth if you want. Um, typically I find that the cone system for me, I've used both, uh, but the cone system for me typically works the best for most items. Um, there are occasionally maybe where a roller system might be a bit better for uh, certain products, um, but the problem with a roller system is things tend to slip. Uh, so again, if we had to go over the item twice, uh, you'd probably never hit it uh, bang on the second time. Um, and when I'm using the cone system, uh, if I have to turn half an inch, it turns half an inch. There is no slippage with it. If we take a look at this system um, and just go over the features, you can see, uh, you know, what's important in a, in a in a in a in a rotary attachment. Again, like I mentioned, there is a cone system uh, that makes it quite easy. You got a cone here. I can actually put my item right on here, and then I can just slide it into the the other side of the actual cone assembly here, and it locks right in. I do have a spring system 
on here that allows me to uh, release the product quickly and get it out of the actual holder and put the next one in. Um, I can lock this down right here so once I do get it in then basically I can bring it in I can basically do that and then when I'm actually done then I can actually just pull this back and release out and put the next one in and it makes productivity a lot quicker this back is adjustable so again if I want to bring the rotary attachment up I can I can adjust here too so I can bring that up and that allows me to be able to clear uh, a handle if I wanted to go all the way around okay um, if it's too close to if it's lowered down too far um, then the problem is there is that the handle is going to catch as the actual um, mug uh, turns all the way around um, the nice thing about having this adjustable though is that it gives you more ability of to work with a, a larger diameter mug because as I raise this up, it, become, it gets closer to the lens, which then starts to, to uh, lower the diameter that I have um, that I can put in the actual rotary attachment itself. So it's kind of nice, a bit of a trade-off there, but um, it does give me some ability to, to move back and forth um, uh, whether I want the handle to go all the way around. Um, if I don't need the handle to go all the way around, I can lower it down and I get a larger diameter. Okay. Um, again, if I loosen this off, you'll notice that I do, I do have a large area here uh, that I can work with. Um, that area is, if we measure it, is, whoops, that area, if we measure it, is a little bit more than 18 inches. So I can put an item in here that's a little bit more than 18 inches long and I can actually turn that. And you'll notice that in some of the, in the machines that we, that we sell, if I go to a 360 or a 400, that becomes longer because the bed is longer. So the nice thing about that is that, um, you know, if I want to, if I want to do a, a longer uh, item, um, then one of the larger machines gives me the ability to do that because now I can work with a larger uh, rotary attachment where I can expand this out wider. Okay. Um, you also notice on the end here, um, I have the ability to raise this up. So if I do have an item like this, where I do have a tapered area, then I can actually raise this up so that I get a, a, an even, uh, a level working area that I can actually etch on. Okay. Now, in the case of this rotary attachment, if I put this in, you'll see that if I raise the end up, then what ends up happening is it goes like this, and that's really um, not working for me because I really need it to be in this way. Okay. Now, on this system, that's quite easy because what I can do here is I can actually just take this, take these off if I want. and I can switch them around. So again, if I switch them around, doing this, then now when I put this in here like so, and I lock this in, now when I actually lift this up, this is gonna be level. Okay, so again, when you're looking, when you have a rotary attachment, you know, you want to look for this feature in the rotary attachment um, because it makes it quite easy when you actually want to raise this up. Okay, I could, if I wanted to, just put a book underneath there, which is what a lot of people do, or or a shim or something to that effect, a piece of wood, and that basically accomplishes the same thing. Um, but the nice thing about this is that I can bring it up, I can lock it in, and now I've got a nice sturdy area here. Uh, attachment now to work on and I can sort of pop this in and out and I don't have to worry about this falling off or being shaky or anything like that. And just remember uh, when you're looking at the rotary attachment, um, remember that 
when you plug the rotary attachment in, in, and just one rule of thumb, when you do plug in the rotary attachment or unplug it, the power needs to be out. Okay, if you don't do that, then you can actually blow a driver board um, and typically that's not something you want to do because that can be quite costly um, on any system. Um, so again, uh, you want to make sure that the power is off when, when, you're, when you're unplugging or plugging this in. But remember that when this is plugged in and the laser comes on, the laser will deactivate the y-axis and the y-axis now becomes the turn of the mug itself. Okay. Remember on a rotary attachment that the rotation on any systems I've ever worked on is always towards the back of the machine. So um, once it's plugged in um, and, you're, and you're looking at the actual rotary attachment in the front, um, so if I spun this around like this, if I was looking at it in the front, the turn is towards the back of the machine so that the, the mug goes back that way and if and if I take make this a little bit easier take my handled mug because then you can actually see the what happens is the mug turns this way away from me towards the back of the machine so again if I've got this in 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 the rotary attachment like this and I've got this up here and I'm starting to etch right here then the 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 turn is going to be this way Okay, an easy way to think about that, and this is really, really important, is that the turn is that way because I'm actually coming down the page of my layout program, such as Corel Draw, from the top of the page, which is zero, all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so. Very important to understand this because when we start looking at positioning things and we understand how, where the item is going to etch on the actual round item, it's very important sometimes where we put that logo that we want to work on. Um, and there's a lot of times where, you know, what I do is I just put it right at the top of the page because if I put it right at the top of the page, it starts etching right away. Uh, the biggest problem that some people have is they bring the, you know, the, the, the logo to the middle of the page, um, you know, and, and what happens then is you've got this large area um, where the mug has to turn first before it actually gets to the, to the, uh, to the item, to, st to the logo to start etching it or the text in this case. So just remember that um, the item you're working with is always turning towards the back. So as I turn, this is my starting point here, and, and as I etch, if I was going to etch all from here all the way around, then it comes this way, and then it comes back up again. So if you were going all the way around with this mug here, you may want to raise this area up here because you want that clearance so that it doesn't hit the bracket or the base of the, the bed or whatever, okay? So you raise this up. Raising this up gives that clearance for the handle to come all the way around and then spin this way. One of the most important things you can do when you're actually looking at setting a job up is you need to, to establish a starting position of where you're going to work on the actual round item. Now, if I'm looking at the rolling pin here, it doesn't really matter where I start if I'm going all the way around. The biggest issue on this application, um, which we'll take a look at uh, later on, is getting the circumference right so that we get the full coverage um, all the way around the rolling pin. If I don't have the proper circumference on here, it's let's say it's too, let's say the circumference is too big, um, then what ends up happening is um, I may get some overlap of, of, of the artwork. Um, so, uh, and if it's not, the circumference is, in, is too small, then I may not actually match up at the end here. So when you're working with something like this, uh, the biggest issue on this one is, is making sure that you get the circumference perfect. Um, but when you're working with um, a lot of times with, with a mug, um, the biggest issue there for, for customers, and, and I know even myself, um, is getting a starting point. Um, and it's, it's not such a big deal on, on one 
item um, because I can just stick it in there, line it up, and off I go. But if I'm if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing this Yeti mug, um, I always want to put this always in the same spot because maybe I'm lining up with the word Yeti. Well, it, I can't just put it in like this and then the next one put it in like this and then the next one put it in like this because the artwork's never going to line up with, with, with where I want it to start. I'll get the first one right, but if I don't put the second one and the third one and the 50th one in the same starting point, um, then I'm going to have issues. Now, the nice thing about the uh, about our system is the red dot pointer um, will allow me to line up. And, and I'll go through this when I actually do a Yeti mug and show you how this is done. But it's very critical when you're looking at doing mass production of round items that you establish a starting point. Now, you, you can use the, I can use the, 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 the distance, uh, the space here between the E and T on, on the Yeti, and I'll line up with that. Um, but sometimes, you know, I may not have a starting position. Um, in the case of this mug here, um, you know, I don't know exactly where, where, where the position is. And a lot of times when you put this in here and you're trying to use the red dot pointer, um, it goes all the way through the glass. It's hard to see. So you notice on this one, I've actually put the transfer tape on the back here and I've actually marked an X or a plus symbol here. And then what I'll do is I'll put this in here and I'll line the red dot pointer up with that plus symbol. Okay, so every time I put this in, it's always in the same spot. So normally what I'll do is I'll line up 50 glasses um, and then basically I'll, I'll just, I'll have tape on each one of these. Now I could come across here and line up with this and then have it turn all the way back here. I can do that too. I just tend to like to do it this way because I like to have the red dot pointer exactly where I want to start. Um, and again, when I put this in, the red dot pointer is right on the, on the plus symbol here. And then all I have to do is just peel this off and then press the go button and off I go. Okay. On a, on a, on a, on this, um, glass item here, um, I actually had, um, an actual seam on here. And, and what I ended up doing was, was lining up with the seam. Uh, and that made it quite easy. Um, so again, you could do something like that because again, you notice here there's a front and there's a back. Well, I don't want to be not paying attention and accidentally put the back in, right? So again, these are things that need to be thought about before you actually go ahead and, and produce the actual um, image on the actual round item. You know, on a handled mug, um, a lot of times, you know, I may just start somewhere around here and, and, then, and then off I go. So again, it's always important when you're, when you're going to go ahead and, and work with the product um, is that we always have a starting point that we're going to work off. I know with, you know, with a, a wine glass, it's not a big deal, you know, whether it goes here or whether it goes here, it doesn't matter. I have no reference point. There's no handle, there's no logo or anything that I have to, I have to line up with. So on a wine glass, it's such a, not such a big deal. All I'm really worried on the wine glass is, is I don't get too close to the top and I don't get too close to the bottom. Okay. So again, you need to assess the glass that you're working with before you go ahead and, and do the job. Okay. And when I do the individual uh, videos on working just with this mug or this mug, um, you know, or maybe this glass, um, I'll go through it a little bit more in depth of how I would take a look at this and how I would set it up. No instructional video would be complete if we didn't talk about doing glass engraving. I've been selling lasers for almost 30 years and I've seen, I've done a lot of glass. Um, and it's still to me one of the most popular um, items that's done on a rotary attachment. Um, there's lots of people that want glass engraved. It's easy to do. It's a good profit mar uh, profit center for for a lot of people. Um, and there's just a couple of things you you've got to think about when you're actually doing the glass. If you watch my video on doing glass engraving on a uh, photograph on, on glass, you'll notice that I use uh, transfer tape to use this. The problem when we just etch directly on glass with a laser machine, what ends up happening is, is 
the laser fractures, you get really small fractures in the glass, um, and that's what gives us the contrast. And the problem is, is that when you laser etch bare glass, some of those fractures start to fall off. Um, and what ends up happening is you'll get some sharding on the glass. You'll, you'll run your finger on it and you'll, you'll feel some shards of glass there. Um, and we want to get rid of that issue, uh, especially on a piece of glass because, you know, you don't want people, you know, f handling it and they got little shards of glass that are going to basically, um, could get into their skin or whatever, um, and, and cut them. So, Again, we want to use something that gives us a nice frosted effect. Um, if we use um, the transfer tape or we use the wet newspaper or we use the soap on the glass, um, that allows the fractures to be smaller and they don't tend to separate off the glass. So when you rub them, they're actually, it's nice and smooth. It almost feels like a really fine uh, sand uh, etching that, that happens on the glass. Okay. I typically like to use the transfer mask. Um, the problem I find nowadays with newspaper eh, is it's hard to find it because it's hard, hard to find just a newspaper. So what I end up having to use a lot of times is is uh, is the mailers. And the problem with mailers is the quality of the paper um, is it it's 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 really hard. It's hard to form it around a glass. Um, and it, I always say to people, what's wet? You know, I mean, if you wet it down, I mean, some people wet it too much, so the settings they've got in there don't work as well. Um, the nice thing about transfer mask is it's always consistent. You know, if I have a power and speed setting and, you know, I, I use it one day and I go to do the glass six months down the road and I use the same transfer paper, it's the same power and speed settings. So I'm not having to guess all the time. Okay. Um, when I'm doing the actual transfer tape, I like working on a table like this, nice and solid. Um, I tend to pull out the transfer tape here like this, just place it down on the actual table itself and then just down like that and then just pull it straight so there's no wrinkles. Take the X-Acto knife, cut it like this. The nice thing is when you're working on a piece of, on a table like this is that now what I can do is I can actually run a line all the way down here and then run a line along here, which then allows me now to take my piece of transfer tape, and you can see I've already put one on here, um, and it allows me now, if I want, to make my plus symbol here if I'm looking for a certain location uh, for startup point, okay? And again, if I want to do another one, I'm just basically going here and peeling this off here. And, and for me, I can just, you know, cut all the way down here. And now I've got, you know, in this case, maybe, maybe 20 pieces of paper ready to go. I'm just peeling them, sticking them right on the actual glass. Uh, if I have to make my mark and then I'm ready to go. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice because it, I'm not having, I'm, you know, a lot of times you'll see people, you know, trying to cut rectangles on here with a nut, with a, with a pair of scissors you know, or, or a, um, you know, on the knife and it's very hard. If you lay it flat like this and then you just basically cut what you need, then, um, that makes it a lot easier. And then I tend to find you get a lot less wastage, you know, for the transfer tape. So again, it's something that, uh, you know, I always like using the transfer tape, uh, for that basic reason. Uh, some people like to use soap and again, you know, that, if that works for you, then that's great. Um, but again, Try to stay away from doing bare glass. I mean, I know sometimes you have to do it because the customer doesn't give you a lot of money, uh, but certainly um, the, uh, you know, at least having some median there to give you a, a better quality etch is always preferred. Okay. Um, the only problem, you know, with, with transfer tape is sometimes if you are on, you know, something like this, it's kind of hard to, to get a, you know, half decent location, you may start to get some folding on here and you've got to be a bit careful on that. You know, and then times like that, sometimes the soap works a lot better for that. Uh, even sometimes the, the, the newsprint will work better. But like I said, the problem with a lot of newsprint now is it's a lot, the paper's a lot heavier. 
Um, so it doesn't tend to form as well the same way as this does on the, on on this type of a glass. So just try not to have any creases on here, uh, because if you get if you get creases, then what ends up happening is that can be superimposed on the actual job itself, and it can ruin the image when you etch it. So try to keep it as smooth as you can. What you need to do is just basically plug it in, shut the lid. and then turn the power on. Now what will happen is the machine will home out to the top left hand corner like it normally does. And then it will pop out like out towards the middle of the table here. That's very important because when I see that head move down I know that the the rotary attachment is active in the laser. Now if I open up the lid here, you notice here that the rotary attachment is pushed up against the edge of the ruler here and against the top ruler there. There's two finger hooks on this particular rotary attachment. That clamps over the actual ruler itself. So I'm, I'm, that means I'm in the exact place that I need to be. Very, very important that I'm there. We don't want this rotary attachment too far ahead here like this because now I'm not even with the middle of the rotary attachment. And if I'm going to power down mode here, I can move the head across here and you'll notice that I'm right in the middle of the actual attachment itself, which is where I want to be, which is the highest point of the actual item that I'm working with. Because remember, the glass is moving this way and I want to keep it level. Okay? Remember, when I'm plugged in, this part of the movement is not working anymore. The movement of, of the Y, the bed move this way, up and down, is now the turn of the actual rotary attachment itself. I have my X moving this way, like this, but my Y, which is the height, is now the actual movement of the rotary attachment itself. Very, very important to remember that. So I'm now locked in and I'm in the proper location. Very, very important. I've got my bar over here, so if I want to adjust my angle, I can do that. Um, if, I, if I need to, I can move this back and forth here. Um, I can also take these cones off, as I mentioned earlier. I can even put on, make my own cones if I want. That's the beauty of this system here, is these pitch, these, these screws here are standard pitch screws, and basically I can take these off and, and I can make my own holding jigs if I want. So if I don't like the cone jigs, take these off. I can, I can put these in. We also sell a three-jaw chuck for this system, and again, uh, if I want, I can pop the three-jaw chuck on there if I'm doing some really small items and I want to actually hold um, the clamp here. Now what I've got here is I've got job control opened up. You can see here I've got the page size 17 by 29, but I don't have the rotary active in job control yet. Um, I'm going to do it a uh, uh, different way here because I want people to understand exactly what's going on with the physical laser and how it relates to where we put the logo. So I'm going to go in here to my settings under options. I'm going to go to my rotary attachment. I basically picked uh, 2.75 as my midpoint uh, for my tapered uh, glass there. Uh, I want the rotation speed to be a little bit slower than 100%. Basically what that means is as the glass goes back to home, it doesn't go to 100%. So sometimes if it goes too fast, it may rock the glass a little bit, fall off. And I want the job to return to the starting position because I'm using the red dot pointer at the start position to be my lineup item. Say OK. The rotary attachment is now active. We can see that by the picture of a, of a rotary attachment icon here. This has no, no relationship to the rotary attachment on the bed. It's just telling you that the rotary attachment is active. 
You'll also notice that my, my red dot pointer is exactly at the 23 inch mark on the ruler. And if I move the ruler back and forth, or the laser head back and forth, you notice that this changes. So in this case here, I want, let's, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the mug here. And I'm going to bring my attachment out, or my logo out. And if I view the image, there it is right there. Now, this is very, very critical. Okay. I have the logo at the top of the page. And what this means is that when the laser starts, it's going to start engraving right away. It will not turn the actual glass, or in this case, the white coffee cup that's in here. So if I shut the lid, and I'm just going to use minimal power here. I don't really need to burn anything in here. I'll go at a, let's go at 100 speed. I'm not doing any cutting. Now, if, if I run this, watch what happens. It'll start etching right away. You can see the blue line in there, hopefully, and what, notice what's going to happen now is the going to start etching and the glass, or in this case the coffee mug, is going to start to move towards the back of the machine. And you can see on the screen it's parsing the information down. Okay. This is very important to understand because this is the way that, as I mentioned, all rotary attachments that I've ever seen work. And this is typically what I would suggest. If you do, if you have to send over a page size, say in a 12 by 24 or some size like that, don't put your logo in the middle of the page. Put your logo at the top because then what will happen is it starts etching right away. Okay. So as this image starts to finish, then what's going to happen is it's going to roll right back to the starting position. You know, And it's back to the start position. Okay. Now, watch what happens if I bring that logo down here, which is normally what a lot of people do. And if I run the job, watch what happens to the mug. It naturally has to turn, and as it we move down the page. So typically for positioning, I normally would, in this case here, because I really don't have to worry too much about where the location is, other than I've got a seam there, but if it was a wine glass, I wouldn't have to worry too much about it. I normally keep that image at the top of the page and start etching right away. You'll see the, I'm moving back, the, the, the cup is moving back to the, it's turning towards us now and not going away from us. It's coming back to the start position, okay? Again, typically what I would normally do in the case of, uh, of, a, co of a wine glass or whatever, I like to keep it up at the top. And really what I'm trying to show you isn't really a, where you want to, have an optimum location uh, for this particular glass. You just need to understand that if I if I have the logo at the top, then the etching starts right away. If I move it down here, then the etching, the the glass has to rotate this much before it starts etching. Okay, and you know you may want to come out here, and you know sometimes what I'll do is I'll have guide rules out like this. And I'll say, well, this is exactly how far the logo can be. And then if you want, you can actually save this as a, as a job. 
And then if I want to use a different logo later on, I can just basically, you know, drag another logo in here if I want. And, you know, I can get rid of this one and then drag that logo into there. And again, like I said, put it right up at the top. I try and make things just a little bit simpler for some people that find it a little bit harder to visualize diameter versus circumference. Let's take a look at a little bit of a different uh, uh, example um, of how we can explain this. I'm in Corel Draw, and I've got a three-inch size circle right here. Um, so again, this is the diameter. So if if I go from he uh, here to here, or from here to here, or here to here, it's going to be three inches. Okay. Now, like I said, this is a 3D type item and when we actually put artwork on here what we're really working with is 2d artwork so we need to superimpose this so that's why we put it on a flat page okay so if i take a look at this object this round item here uh, this is a perfect shape so it's a circle so again um, the problem here is that um, if i want to come in and see what the size is by let's go in here and let's look up uh, object properties you notice here that um, right now I don't have the actual distance for all the way around here and I can I can establish that in Corel if I want the only problem is because this is a perfect shape um, I need to convert this to curve so it becomes a standard object like you would normally draw you know if you're doing a logo or something like that and that's easily done by just going up here and then convert to curves uh, you'll notice now I've got four nodes here instead of the one and if I go to the curve option here for the properties you can see that it's telling me that it's 9.42 inches and that is the actual line width of the actual circle itself and again that's really just pi so it's 3 which is the diameter so 3 inches diameter times pi which is 3.14 which equals 9.42 okay so that's sort of how we sort of figure it out and the and what you want to do in 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 Corel if you're sort of going to go this route is we can just create another page and that page height will become uh, the, 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 the 9.42. Now, for older systems, the way this would have been shown would have been 9.42, um, would have been your height, and your width would have been whatever width you want to work with. Uh, it really didn't matter on the old systems. I mean, it could be, you know, two inches or three inches. Let's assume it's three inches. And then what you would do is then we would just take a logo. Um, let's just go grab a logo here. Uh, here's a logo right here and let's just get rid of the, the red outline and then that logo would have been turned you know 90 degrees or 270 depending on which way the cone was sitting or the roller was sitting and then I would place this wherever I wanted to um, in the in on the page and that would hopefully relate to the item that I'm working with. Now, if you're doing a wine glass, then normally what you would have done is just sort of, you know, put it right up. I would tell people, put it right up here at the top. And what will happen is it'll start etching right away. So just like as if it was, uh, we're working on a flat table, if I had this in the top left, if I had this on the top left-hand corner or against the top ruler, it's going to start engraving right away. And the, and the rotary machine is exactly the same. If I bring this logo down here, then this area right here, that area there, is the actual movement of the of the actual of the actual glass before it starts etching. Okay, so again, you know, if I look at this item right here, and you notice here that I'm 9.42 inches, right? This is the height here. So if I select this and I measure from the top 
um, you'll notice that um, you know basically I'm down uh, well, if I put in let's say I put in 8.42 inches now what I'm down is an actual inch so that the actual glass will turn an inch on the road or the, the, the glass will turn an inch so the circumference is covered by an inch as the turn and then it starts etching okay now you know the Trotec system a little bit the only real difference between what we're doing here is normally what I do is we do it the opposite way keep everything like this and then basically I can produce this wherever I want if I want to use the full page here <clears throat> That's typically not the way I do it. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll normally just go file print, preferences, minimize the job size, and that will make the page size uh, that I'm working with the size of the actual logo, which is pretty cool. Current page, print. I go to job control. I've already got the rotary attachment set up here. Um, and again, I can move that over and then all I'm going to do is bring my logo in and it's turned it and my cone happens to be facing this way and I'm, it's the same thing I'm going to put this up at the top of the page and then what's going to happen when the laser starts etching it's going to start etching exactly where the red dot pointer is uh, which is the starting point of my actual um, uh, logo as it's being engraved on the, on the actual mug or, or Yeti or rolling pin or whatever. Okay, if I move it down here, then again this space becomes the area of turn before this actually starts etching again. Okay, so again, it's really it depends on how you want to do it. Some people would rather you know let's remove this. Um, let's go back to the rotary again. Let's turn it back on again. Um, Again, you, you've, you've got the rotary, you know, set up here. So the other way I could do this on the on the Trotec system is again, I could put the I, I, I've created a page here that's uh, 9.42 inches. Um, I put my logo in the far right-hand corner. Um, if I wanted to make this smaller here, I could come in here and say, okay, well, I only want this two inches as opposed to the three inches. Um, and then all I really need to do is go file print. And in here, I'm going to put in, uh, you know, two inches is, is my height. My diameter is three. I've indicated the rotary attachment is going to be active. It's telling me what the circumference is supposed to be, which in this case is 9.42 inches. Um, and then base, I'm just going to say, OK, I'm going to go file print. Uh, come in here to job control. There's the job there. I'm going to drag it out, and it will basically automatically start up the job, the rotary attachment, and then I can move this up. And you can see that the paid size fills up the full page of 9.42 inches. So again, the driver has done it automatically for me in terms of the size. So again, I can do it in the print driver, or um, and I and now the page size is the size of the actual full circumference. Um, or what I could do is I can remove uh, that job and what I can do is I can come in here and I could go to options accessories rotary three inches once I'd say three inches that determines the diameter of the page I'm working on which in this case is 9.425 and then all I need to do then is drag out my logo and you can see that I can bring this up and again I'll talk a little bit more about about how we would work with these types of setups uh, on different types of mugs and everything like that but again the most critical thing here just as an introduction is to understand that um, this is my left my X movement my left and right of my machine going back and forth this way and this is basically the turn of the mug so from here to here is the actual full turn of the mug. So if I go from here 
to the bottom it's a full turn of the mug I'm, if I go from here to here then I end up going back up here so it, it's really just a continuous it, it looks flat but in reality it's continuously going all the way around okay so if I make this if I made the page size 18 points you know uh, 42 18 point uh, you know 84 then that would be two turns of the mug so I can go all the way around twice I can't really think of why you want to do that but theoretically you, you could do that if you want so really all you're doing here is establishing where I need to be left to right and I like to again in this case here for most applications I normally like to be at the top of the page because what I want to have happen is the etching has to happen right away okay if I bring it down here then I got some turn and I and again you've got to be careful so that you're you measure whatever that turn is supposed to be if you're going to bring it down here and there's ways of doing that on game we'll get through we'll show you how to do that uh, because sometimes I do bring it away from the actual edge depending on how I need to figure out what the location of the actual logo well this end of my introductory video to the rotary attachment I tried to keep it a little bit more ge more generic for for others that may have different rotary attachments, um, but at the same time, hopefully, it showed uh, uh, most uh, Chotec users, you know, how to to at least begin looking at the rotary attachment. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's very, very important, as it is with anything you're working on, whether it's flat or round, that you assess the job and look at it and. Uh, Keep the process in mind. Don't just look at something and say, yeah, it's going to go into the corner there. Think about if we're doing more than one, if we're doing 50, how can I make it quick so it's, I can just put a piece in there and press the, the, the repeat button. You know, if it's just a seven by nine plaque, I can just stick it up in the top left-hand corner and then press go and then off, off I go. But if I'm working on a rotary attachment, you know, there, and I want, it to, I want to put the next one in and be in the same spot in terms of the start point so that I can just press the go button, it requires a little bit more thinking. And hopefully in this video I've given you um, some things to think about before you go ahead and just, you know, grab a glass and say I can do 50 and then just start firing them in there. You got to think about it. Uh, you have to sort of look at some ways of, of being able to put that item in there so that it's always in the same spot and that will make the repeatability a, a lot faster so that you can speed the job up and just put one glass in, take it out, put the next glass in, take it out and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click the like button in the, in, in the, in the tool, in the status bar there. Uh, it helps the site. Um, there will be some more videos that will be coming on different items. I'll be doing those periodically as we go. Um, and if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below.